I'm, I'm really so delighted to be here. Um, principally, all my work as a doctor and a pediatric neurologist is entirely based around my patients. And the fact that I have the privilege of being part of the AT community, both at the patient level and also the research level, um, isn't a place I ever imagined. And I'm very lucky to be here. The meeting that we just had, uh, um, which um, uh, uh, Carl was talking about, certainly um, is an ex extraordinary showcase of immense talent, um, really on a platform that uh, Professor Gatti, uh, Martin Lavin, Tom Crawford and others have built over really uh, decades. And the fact that we have such high-level bioscience in such a rare field um, is extraordinary. And one of the things I just wanted to say from the outset is I feel that patients and families are in a very difficult position now because we have so much promise, so much on the horizon. So I think the waiting is exquisitely painful. And it's also a little bit painful for us clinicians as well because we very much like and get to know our families very well. And I think it, re it requires a lot of patience and, and mutual respect on everybody's behalf as we all go on this, on this journey together. One of the reasons um, we have a clinic is because of Maureen Poupard, who many of you will know, um, ran the AT clinic in Nottingham. And I already knew uh, William Whitehouse and Gabby Chow from pediatric neurology community and asked them um, about their model of care. So our clinic is very young compared to your clinic here in UK, but we're trying our very best to emulate it. Um, the reason our clinic is in Brisbane is partly because of Professor Martin Lavin, who for a long time has worked at the Queensland Institute of Medical Research, which is one of the top 10 medical research institutes in the world. Um, we also have an amazing uh, mother called um, Chrissy Robig, who many of you may know through the Brashat website. Uh, she ha was had two children diagnosed within a very short period of time when they were very young, and her extraordinary uh, sadness turned into a really incredible commitment to raise funds and awareness for AT. Uh, and I came into it because I have a background of, uh, I've set up a couple of multidisciplinary clinics um, in cerebral palsy and neuromuscular medicine and now movement disorders. So um, that was my, my, my into this. And I certainly don't have the professorial expertise of any of the other speakers. Um, so uh, this was a, a, a map just to put everything in context. We are down the right hand uh, bottom bit, but I would just add that we have a really big challenge because we can fit the whole of Europe into Australia, but we have very small numbers of patients. So Kate Monroe, who's our clinical nurse coordinator, does a fantastic job of getting all the information from all the patients. We have patients in Perth, uh, Melbourne, South Australia. Um, and all over the place, so we, we have some challenges that other people don't have. And it's not a, 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 a model to um, overtake um, uh, Europe or anything like that, or even to solve your credit problems. <laughs> um, one of the things which came from one of the ataxia groups is a lot of questions that um, parents themselves put together as to what was really important for them. And I always uh, try and remember this uh, as we get more involved in things, uh, to go back to the basics. You know, what do I have? What's the cause? Are my children at risk? Will it get worse? How bad will it get? And how soon can it be treated? And can it be cured? And is there any research being done? OK, so we, it's all about teamwork. And the teamwork starts with the families. And this is our opening of our, uh, our clinic. We also have a, a very uh, tricky health economic climate. So if we're going to do anything smart like this, we always get the politicians involved and make sure that they you know, make a commitment to help us out. So um, Chrissy had managed to befriend um, this lovely politician on the left. And uh, the, the gentleman on the left is the head of our University of Queensland Center for Clinical Research. We have a fantastic new building with lots and lots of space. And these are some of the children, um, the opening cake. And Chrissy's husband, Sean Robig, who died, unfortunately, um, uh, is just there kneeling down uh, by his son on the right. And there are some of the researchers in the background. Um, so 
there are very, very many um, different um, metabolic and biochemical disorders which result in ataxia and other movement disorders, but the central nervous system has a, a limited repertoire, uh, which is why uh, many, uh, um, um, we, uh, uh, many of them um, come under the, the, the guise of ataxia. And in some, in some, in some terms, this is actually uh, 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 quite helpful. Um, but I think um, uh, Professor Shiloh's point that we should really be trying very hard early on to look at many children present with the variety of movement disorders and make sure that they don't have AT is a very important one. So this is just comparing. We have two multidisciplinary clinics, Ataxia T. Langectasia and Friedrich's Ataxia. Um, <clears throat> they're quite uh, different, but we learn um, from each, uh, each of, the, of the clinics uh, different things. One of the neurological problems um, with AT and when we have our registrars in the clinic and we're teaching movement disorders, children and young people with AT have almost every single movement disorder uh, in, 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 uh, in their repertoire. And um, uh, so people find it extraordinarily confusing when they've not met, a, met families with AT before. But teaching and education is a real key part of our clinic. Um, this is just one of the timetables. This is the AT timetable. I'm sorry, I left the surnames on, but I'm sure the children won't mind. We have a three-day clinic. Um, the children have eight to nine different appointments. Um, we start with a multidisciplinary roundtable where we have the entire team in the room, and this is something I developed from the neuropediatric clinic um, in cerebral palsy. It means that the families only have to tell their story once, and we learn from the questions that the dietitians are ask, the OTs ask, the physios, the speech and language, and quite often will have the researchers in there as well um, and uh, uh, and then they go for uh, multiple different clinical appointments occupational therapy all the different therapy appointments and also um, research commitments so it's a very very busy three days but we have fun as well um, and and have normally have a nice evening out together um, uh, this is um, uh, on the right you can see you can see um, uh, Martin Lovin talking to one one of our uh, patients, and, and that father is an absolutely brilliant um, uh, biologist, and he has um, worked out a very extraordinary diet of antioxidants for his daughter, which I'm sure he never gives her any carbohydrate, but um, her cells are growing very well, so we're not really sure if that's just a just a single observation. And next to her is um, Dr. Linda Ross, who's doing a dietetic study for which she's been funded. Um, she takes a, a very comprehensive diet history and is um, and put together um, some supplemental nutrition uh, with some measures she's um, put together with, um, with um, Professor Lavin. Uh, this is our clinic uh, clinics for the year. And um, uh, you should all move to Australia because we have the biggest number of public holidays, the orange of any country I know. We even celebrate the Queen's birthday where you don't get a day off in England. <laughs> this is, um, actually I have to say this is a bit unfair, but um, uh, because this little girl has episodic ataxia, which is a little bit different, but um, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, we have we uh, have to do all sorts of inducements to encourage children to have fun and participate in life. And I'm, I used to be a riding instructor for the riding for the disabled, so I'm very, very keen on, on the horses. Okay, so um, we, we, uh, we're a satellite clinic for the very successful Friedrichs Ataxia Clinic in Melbourne, where they do the most incredible multi-level research, which is also uh, showcased um, by, the, by the clinics and researchers in AT around the world. Um, so we thought we'd do our best. Um, Martin obviously already had extremely well-established research and has gone forward and has spoken to you a little bit about his exciting animal models, maybe, and the, the stem cell work. Um, we at the clinic collect the skin cells and the nasal epithelial cells. All the parents have to have these done too, and you can come to our clinic and have cocaine because the parents have to have cocaine up their nose in order to have the nasal sample. Another good reason to come to Australia. Um, we also have um, uh, the nutrition research, and I was very keen when I went to the Frankfurt meeting, one of the fathers did a study um, on um, body mass index um, in children, and William had said to me that he observed that nutrition was incredibly important um, to address in, in children and young people with AT. 
And so um, we do body composition and energy expenditure. We have a, a thing called the Bod Pod, and the kids look like they're sort of going diving, and it's a, a bit of a stress for them and a stress for the people who do it because 80 children always move, and they're not used to that, but we tell them to get on with it. Um, my, my particular um, interest has always been um, in neuroimaging, and um, we have very amazing neuroimaging um, in, in Queensland, and you always have to use what, what resources you have locally. We have excellent molecular bioscience and very excellent imaging. Um, I saw a, uh, there are a few studies um, in a uh, degenerative ataxias in MRI, um, and this one um, um, uh, particularly uh, looked at tractography. Now, tractography, when you look at an MRI scan, which you, many of you will have looked at, it's um, gray and white and black, um, and it's the actual, uh, just looking at the different tissues. What we can do is have a way of looking at w the way the water moves within the brain and um, where pockets of water move in a particular way, we can um, derive um, information to show us where the tracks, the T-R-A-C-K, so the tracks, they're not equivalent to the actual fibers, but they're, they're, it tracks the, the, um, the connections in the brain. <laughs> 